Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and welcome to update 30 of Universe Sandbox. So it's been a while since um, we've had an update but here we go. So update 30, hit hard, spin fast. So I'm already looking at the image up there. That looks pretty cool. So anyways, um, Sir Trifle Force, I'm probably completely butchering how you say that, but planets will fragment at very high rotational speeds as uh, centrifugal force over ones the gravity holding them together. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Same object collision improvements. Colliding two objects of similar size now heats and fragments both objects. Uh, force spin tool. Change an object's rotation speed poles equated with the new force spin tool. Check it in tools, force and spin. More highlights. The hackle zone now adjusts to show the specific hackle distance of a selected or added objects. Ooh. Interesting. Added a spacecraft in the solar system simulation. Okay, the Hubble Space Telescope has been added. Yeah, we saw that in the um, in the test community test build. That should be pretty cool. Um, gas and dust particle visibility has been enhanced and incorporated into view object visibility settings. Numerous improvements to collision dynamics and crew improve conservation of momentum, crater speeds, and fragment ejection patterns. Okay, I want to see. Does this do anything? Uh, aha. Okay, so. Interesting. So before we actually get into that, I'm just going to read the rest of the notes as well, because there's more up on the uh, on their um, Google Drive page. So, uh, more oceans. Force now pushes water on fast spinning objects towards the object's equator. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the faster you spin, it changes the oceans. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Oh, okay, I see. And then you can also change an object's rotational speed, poles, and equator with the new force spin tool. Check it in tools for spin. So that's what we just read about as well. Um, I'm just looking. You can now change the number of atmosphere layers an object and has create Venus-like planets. Oh, that's cool. How do you do that then? Number of atmosphere. So you can now change the number of atmosphere layers. So that means that you can probably make objects hotter then. The Hubble Space Telescope has been added. We've corrected the James Webb Telescope now facing away from the sun. Parker Space Probe now facing towards the sun. Okay, that's cool. And there's just a bunch of other improvements and stuff. If you want to read the full notes, then uh, go ahead. Um, pretty cool, though. So, very, very nice indeed. So, uh, yeah, there's just loads and loads of improvements and uh, bits and bobs there. But anyways, let's actually get into the fun now. So, centrifugal destruction. I hope I'm saying that right. Objects spinning very quickly experience a disruptive force that pushes outwards from the line or axis around which object rotates. The force can even contract the gravity that holds an object together, which causes devastating... <laughs> oh, let's experiment on the Earth. Okay. So, we're going to tools, force. Okay, I'm just going to put that... So, force. Oh. More force is applied the further from the centre of an object you aim. Aim at the earth, then press and hold to make it spin faster. Okay. So. Oh my god, what is all this? So that's going to make it spin faster in that direction. Okay. So now it's making the water change. That's pretty cool. We've made the earth spin fast enough to push its oceans towards its new equator. That's probably not good for earth, but at least it still has all of its water. So you can see all the water's moved to the equator area because the spin is faster. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay. And the centrifugal force increases the faster an object rotates. Let's spin up the earth even more. Aim at the earth and press it to make it spin even faster. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Now the Earth is spinning so fast, its own gravity can't hold it together, and it's pulling itself apart. That's definitely not good for Earth, but we can still make it rotate faster. Double the spin acceleration with a two times multiplier, and let's continue. Oh my god! It's gone! That's, um... That's bad. Oops, we made the Earth spin so quickly it ripped itself to pieces. A very large force can... Completely over on object's own gravity. Oh, we've got to try this with the sun and stuff. Okay. Um, all that remains is a small molten core. Try to spin up the leftover bit of Earth to see how quickly the other... To make the other planets rotate before they're destroyed. Okay. Oh, no way. So that's the core. Oh! It's gone! There's nothing left. The entire... <laughs> that's the whole mass of Earth. Gone. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's try. I'm going to try Jupiter. So, what, the largest... The largest of the planets. Let's see what happens here. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go into our custom simulations so it just looks a little cooler. So, we'll open that up, see what we got. But yeah, so I have a few other things I want to definitely try in this. So, 
Uh, we are update 29. Let's go in here. I hope this simulation still has. I hope it hasn't broke or anything because it's uh, an update 29 now, but it should be fine. Anyways, let's see what we got here. Right, so Jupiter. Okay, I forgot it was upside down. <laughs> right, okay, so Force. We want to spin Jupiter fast, so we're going to press play. Uh, it's obviously slow down time. We don't want to go too insane. Okay, so we're traveling to a few hours, but anyways, let's continue to uh, speed. Oh! Oh, Jupiter's spinning so fast, it's losing its material. <laughs> so we've got a big load of gas. So Jupiter's just losing its gas, its material. Okay, so you can sort of change how it spins. Look, if we press this way, look, we can stop Jupiter spinning that direction, and now we can make it spin the other way. So look at this, look what we're doing. So we've flipped it upside down. Is this um, spin acceleration? It's times that by two. Oh, 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 here you go. The tubes are spinning like absolutely crazy. Tilted on its side like Uranus. Oh, damn. And that's a very, very hot molten core there. But that's Jupiter gone. <laughs> oh, God. That's, um... Oh, and there's the core gone. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, right, we've got to do this with the sun. Let's see what happens. This, this is going to be... I think all hell's going to break loose here. Uh, let's, uh... Yeah, sun. Okay, sun. Got to get that big body spinning though. Uh, let's spin accelerate. We have to go quite fast here because it's quite a lot. Obviously, the sun's a lot bigger, so it's going to take longer to uh, get going. But you can see it is slowly but surely. I mean, let's just times by ten. Surely that'll work. There you go. Okay, so it's spinning a bit. So we can see the poles are changing as well. The north and south areas of the sun are changing. We're still spinning. Uh, let's go faster. Oh, it really takes a while to get the sun rolling, doesn't it? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Get a bit speed. Give us some speed. There you go. Oh, okay. So the sun is now tearing itself to shreds. So that's a star blowing up. So if we just let it play for a bit. So it will do it slowly. If we don't increase... Oh, look at that. That's so cool. So imagine just looking from Mercury's perspective here. Just seeing that. So the sun is just... Look at that! <laughs> oh my god. So from Mercury's perspective, see the sun just tear itself to shreds. Look at all that material it's losing. Woohoo! Oh wow. Okay. So does the sun actually lose it's lost mass, obviously. The luminosity it's lost luminosity as well. Ah, uh, makes sense. So it's losing uh, mass, its luminosity can't hold it. Uh so easy now. Interesting, okay. Oh Well that's gone. Damn, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the end of that. Wow, okay, that's cool. Right, um, where are we? Let's go back in. So let's uh, let's check out the Hubble Space Helicopter as well, because that's new. So let's open this up. We should see the um, the new Planet 9 as well. That should be um, in the game. Yeah, there it is. Cool, so Planet 9. Remember, it's got its own uh, texture now. So Planet 9 is, um, is in here. That's pretty cool. So Planet 9, yeah, now has its own texture in this version of the game, as we saw in the experimental build. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. So, yeah, we like that. Oh, I never knew you could scroll it down like that. But yeah, that's cool. So, that has a texture now. Or where are we? So, uh, da -da -da. should be... There it is, Hubble. Okay, let's have a look at Hubble. Um, we did see it in the development build, but let's have a look at it now. Okay, Hubble Space Let's it there. There you go. So it's around Earth. Okay, and obviously, like we saw in the experimental build, there is that. So Hubble is in the game, looking good. So there we go. And then also, for anyone who didn't see the video where we checked out the experimental version of the build, the new Planet Nine is there. So that's what Planet Nine now looks like in this sketch. It looks really good. I think. I think it looks awesome. So. Check that out. I think it looks, yeah, the clouds, the bands, I think that looks really, really cool. So, yeah, there is the uh, Planet 9's upgraded texture. But one thing we'll do is while we're here, let's uh, slow down time. We're going to blow up Planet 9 right next to the Earth and see what happens. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh, I think we were playing too fast. It just pulled the Earth straight in. So, oh, damn, that's a big explosion. That's a huge explosion. <laughs> wow, okay. Interesting. Right, and they also said, uh, if we go to, I think it was, is it Guides is the new one? Uh, no, that's not what we need. Uh, 
Uh, there's a new simulation we need to check out. All simulations. Uh, let's see. I'm sure there was a new simulation they mentioned. But anyways, they said um, when you collide two Earths, the simulation was just about to collide in two Earths, so we'll go ahead and actually do that. So apparently there's a new... They look different when they collide now, so let's have a little look. So the patch. So if I just uh, get the patch notes up here again. So the patch notes said... Uh, where are we? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so... Before and after... Rotation speed of objects after collisions are now more accurately conserved, decreasing which mass is gained and when it's lost. Okay. And it's also... Colliding two objects of similar size now causes heating and fragmentation on both objects. Oh, okay, I'm looking at the before and after. That makes... Okay, so let's see how this plays out. Okay, here we go. So two Earths. So both objects should explode now, because before apparently only one of them did it. So let's see how this works. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, I see what it means. Okay, that looks a lot better. So they're now forming into one new object. Okay. That's pretty cool then. Nice. Alright, anyways, heading back to the... So that's yeah, that's a cool little feature. But one thing I want to try is this making planets more like Venus. So it's something to do with atmosphere layers. So let's just go to... Uh, we'll go to Mercury, for instance. We'll try it on Mercury first. So... Let's go atmosphere. Ooh, okay. There's some new density. Speed of sound. Let's actually look at the Hattable Zone as well, actually, while we're... So... That's really cool. Uh... So it said something about the Hattable Zone was different, so I'm not sure what we're meant to be looking at. Uh, so what did it say about Hattable Zone? Uh, da -da. Um, the Hattable Zone changes to use the properties of the object you have selected to show its optimal Hattable distance. Oh, okay. So, if I, so we selected Mercury. If I select Venus... Oh, oh, okay, I, I get it what it means. So, obviously Venus has a higher atmosphere pressure, so you would have to move Venus to the green area for it to actually be okay, for instance. So there's Jupiter there, Mars. So if you wanted to warm Mars up, Mars would have to be in the green zone. So that's cool. So I really like that. And obviously Earth is just right, so it's already in the blue. Uh, for instance, Jupiter, if we wanted Jupiter to be warmed up, we'd have to move it in there as well. Same with Saturn, probably all have to be sitting in that area but that's really cool so for instance venus if we want venus to be hattable so let's actually just experiment this right now so if we were to double up and put it say there uh roughly there so that's in that's a, that's a comfortable area in the green zone now so that's almost at the distance of jupiter so it's actually speed up time let's actually see if this actually works so let's see if that cools down to where it should be so if it's in the green area it should be around 20 20 degrees roughly is where we want to sort of sit around there so let's actually see where this eventually cools down to so let's just let time play out go really really fast here let's zoom out so it's not too crazy for everyone watching so 40 30 okay so that's cool so now it can sort of the game can sort of tell you where exactly you need to place your objects to make them hattable that's really cool i really like that so you can see venus is now comfortable it's now at a good temperature that's good i like that that's really cool Alright, anyways, on to Mercury. So I want to try this new atmosphere thing that's added to the game. So it's to do with... You can now change the number of atmosphere layers an object has. So it's in surface. So it's un underneath infrared. So, where are we? Ah, okay. Right, let's see how this works. So, turn that up. Okay, so keeping our Mercury's temperatures here. Right, so if I change the atmosphere, let's so what does this do? So if I go up to something ridiculous, let's go up to a thousand. So surely that would warm Mercury up just a tad, you know? So let's see how that... Oh, it is. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you don't have to change atmosphere pressure anymore. Now you can just increase atmosphere layers. Number of atmosphere layers... In the objects atmosphere increasing atmosphere heating okay i see so also if you just have one that just means you have one normal atmosphere but if you double it up to two that means effectively you've got two atmospheres working together so if i have a thousand times i got a thousand times more atmosphere than mercury had before so 
That's pretty cool. That's really cool, actually. So I turn it down to, oh, and it cools down again. Ah, that's cool. I like that. So, for instance, uh, Venus, uh, Earth. So, Earth. So, if I was to start doing this, if I times Earth to two, so it's got two atmospheres in it had over it had before. So, look at the temperature on Earth now. So, we've doubled up the atmosphere completely. So, that's quite a big, big deal for Earth. So, we'll see here. Look at look what two atmospheres does to Earth. So immediately we're already double what the temperature would normally be. Almost triple what the temperature would normally be, just with two times atmospheres. So for instance, if we wanted to make it all like Venus. So actually if I just look at Venus, so how many atmospheres does Venus actually have on it? Um where are we? Surface. 215. So if I was to give Earth 215 atmosphere layers. So if I just type in 215, voila. So that's what Venus has. So we're going to see Earth is not going to be a fan of that. So for instance, if we wanted to build it into Venus now, so for instance, the cloud color would be a lot more... That would be more like that. And honestly, if we wanted to make it really like Venus, you'd have to sort of do that a bit. And there you go. So now you can see it. Poor old Earth. It's going to lose a lot of that. So you can see... You can sort of build your own Venus-like objects now, which is really cool. I really like that. That's something I sort of wanted to see for a while. Because being in recent versions of the game, and I mean the last few years' worth of get updates, it's been quite hard to get objects very, very hot. It's been with, at with atmosphere pressure and atmosphere and just atmosphere properties in general. It's been quite hard to get atmospheres to the temperatures of you want you want them around Venus levels. So, but now you can actually do that again. So that's uh, that's pretty good. I really like that addition. That's really really cool. So. Because we have been uh, hoping to see that again. Because I mean, ever since surface goods came out, it's been a lot hotter to, uh, well, it's been a lot harder to warm objects up like you would with Venus. But now you can do it again, so that's uh, really cool. And yeah, we were actually discussing this um, when I was interviewing um, the Mr. Uh, Dan from the developers. So obviously the guy who made the game. So when we were talking to him, uh, we were talking about this, and yeah, he did say it. Something like that was coming. So here it is in the flesh now. So what do you think of that? That's really really cool. So gotta say that is that's awesome so because it looks still got water in it i mean i'm not sure that's gonna be around much longer let's, let's just let time uh i mean i'm sure that water will disappear i mean it's gone dis yeah it's gone yep <laughs> bye bye water so there you go so giving earth the amount that venus has that's what you end up with so you can get a very very hot earth and obviously by that point it'd be a lot thicker like venus so something like that 605 degrees so there we go so you made basically a worse version of venus hotter version of venus so that's really cool so 100% opacity oh man so you can give it a real sort of thick clouded uh, color there so there you go so we've basically just turned earth into venus and we can do it again we can do it with mars so uh how many did venus have so venus had oh where is venus so venus is hit so it's actually further out than where mars is so uh, if we go back to venus it was 215 wasn't it so um, 215 atmosphere less. So, for instance, if we were to give Mars to Mars 215 atmosphere less, let's see how Mars would cope with this. So, so 215. And then we're going to try this with Pluto as well, because you used to be able to colonize Pluto even at its current distant range. But we're going to try that again in this. So, Mars, it's got Venus levels of temperature now, or atmosphere, I should say. So, let's have a look here. So, yeah, it's definitely got. We'll turn that infrared as well, just to give it a little boost. So, put it to zero degrees. We should see straight away that Mars is not going to like that too much. So, we'll let it go all the way. So, oh, what happened there? It went up to about 400 there, and it just dropped. What's that all about? Did we break something? What's happening there? Uh, did the atmosphere, did its atmosphere get broken? Oh, infrared turned up. Oh. Look how bizarre that is. Look, I think we've broken something, guys. Look, <laughs> it, it won't have... Oh, it lost its atmosphere completely. Oh, I see. That's why. So Mars' atmosphere got completely... You can see density is actually losing... It's actually losing its material a bit, so... Okay, so Mars can't even hold on to all of that atmosphere. Oh, interesting, okay. But yeah, for when it when it was working, it was going up to, high, as you can see, high temperatures here. So that's... That's cool. I really like that. Okay. So be careful you don't put it so high that the atmosphere gets completely worn away. <laughs> right, anyways, Pluto. 
Now I want to try Pluto. So let's see if we can get Pluto to warm up. To let's try and make it Earth-like. So for instance, Hatsable Zone. So obviously the Hatsable Zone, you'd have to move Pluto in there. But if I start to upset its uh, atmosphere, so we'll give it. A, I think it's probably the atmosphere mass that you need to increase to make it hold on to all that atmosphere. So let's see if I just go to let's just go to one ATM of Earth. There you go. And now what I'm going to do is uh, infrared. We'll turn that all the way up. Now this, we're going to put up to two. Look, there you go. So as I increase this, we can see where Pluto would need to sit to be getting good temperature. So if I was to put it to a thousand, that's the highest you can go. But if I was to increase this, does that do anything? Okay, that doesn't do anything. So it's all about the atmosphere layers. So you can see that we have now got Pluto in the blue zone by increasing the layers it has. So let's see what sort of temperature Pluto will sit at now. So obviously it's not going to be, it's not in the green area. It's still too cold. But we should see that Pluto can hang on to a bit more temperature than it normally can. And maybe it will uh, stick around, maybe maybe where Mars would normally sit, around minus 50, maybe. Let's see Let's see roughly where Pluto maxes out. So, there you are. That's really cool, though. I really like that. So, let's just keep, keep, it, keep it going. So, my guess is it will sit around Mars' temperature, around minus 60, minus 50. And it looks like it is. Look at that. So, we've immediately got Pluto... Even though it's all, we haven't changed its orbit whatsoever, but we have managed to get its, uh, we'll get the Hatsable zone of where Pluto would roughly be with its current stats all the way out there. That is really, really cool. So, for instance, if I was to try, let's go around Saturn. We're going to try this again. So, we're going to put, uh, we'll just spawn Titan around Saturn, for instance. We're not going all realistic with its distance, but I'm just going to spawn Titan, just nice and easy. So, we're going to put Titan uh, orbit around Saturn, please. So, we're just going to put it there, somewhere there. It doesn't really matter because it's around the orbit of Saturn, so that's fine. So, here's Titan. Right, so, currently, if Titan was going to get warmed up, it would have to be in that Hatsable zone. But if we start to increase its uh, stats, so if we go to surface, for instance, if we go all the way down here. Now, if we increase this, so if we put this somewhere there, 224 atmosphere layers, then we press play. Now, we should see it, Titan is going to get a bit of a uh, bit of action here. So, press play. Now look at the temperature on Titan. Let's watch this as it plays out. So we're orbiting Saturn, obviously. There you go. So let's just put it straight to zero degrees. And there you go. Look at that. So you can now colonize Titan without having to give it or move it closer to the sun, for instance. You can have it colonized around Saturn. Look at that. And also, if you increase it, you can make it go even more crazy. So if we go back to the surface, for instance, we could go too hot. We can make it like Venus. So all we need to simply do here is do this. And there you go. So that's going to make it too hot like Venus. So, for instance, if we look at it now, let's just let time play. Let that go around Saturn for a bit. We're going to slowly watch as that temperature goes skyrocket levels, really. So, there you are. Let's just let that play out. That's going to go... I mean, we'll manually just increase it because I'm sure it will increase itself. So, let's see. Okay, so that, where will it max out around? So, it will max out. It doesn't have as much greenhouse effect as Venus, so it won't be too high. But you can see it's still in the 200s. If I uh, half it, so it still increases from 120. So, that's, that's really cool. So, for instance, if I want to um, have a crazy Titan, there's what you need to do around Saturn. But, for instance, let's just go back to about 215. That's roughly where we were sitting. So, uh, somewhere there. Let's actually see if we can get Titan fully specced out for colonizers. So let's put it to 30 degrees. Okay, so it's still getting too hot. So, for we want to lower it just a bit more. That may be a little too much. Let's put it back to zero degrees. So it's still warming up. 15 degrees. Let's see. So 15.1, 20 degrees. Increases from 20. Put it to 25. It drops from 25. So we're in between 20 and 25. So now that's in good temperature. So, for instance, if we wanted to colonize this guy. So there we are. So let's just turn off all of that now. So Titan. So if we want to make it look pretty, obviously what we need to simply do is um, just uh, lower this. We can actually see to the surface of Titan a bit more now. I can't remember if Titan has a surface map or not. So it may just be completely flooded out. Yeah, it looks like it is. But that's what you need to do if you want to build a good-looking Titan, really. So you still can't really see underneath. So that's what it looks like when you uh, add water to Titan. So yeah, Titan does go really weird when you add water to it. So we'll just add... Uh, it's actually losing that mass or losing that water as well. Look. Yeah, it is actually losing it. It can't actually hold on to it. But there you go. So there's Titan with some water on it for the time being. Uh, clouds. I mean, you can't even see the clouds. I don't know why you can't see the clouds. But atmosphere, there you go. So, I mean, there's effectively a colonized Titan for the time being, which is pretty cool. So, there you are. What do you guys think of that? 
clouds. Yeah, I don't know why the clouds aren't really showing up, but yeah, there it is. So there's Titan colonized. So it probably can't hold on to all of that atmosphere, to be honest, as well. And the water's not really going to work, but that's really cool. I like that. So there you are. Yeah, it has lost its water already, but there you go. So for instance, if you want to get a Titan that's more colonized, that's what you need to do. Really, really cool. So again, same same deal with, um, let's go to, um, you say Europa around Jupiter. So Jupiter over here. Uh, that's Venus, no, Jupiter. So, for instance, if we want to do the same with uh, Europa. So we'll just spawn Europa around there. Somewhere there, nice and easy. Um, there you are. Okay, so again, obviously, first of all, we need to add actually add an atmosphere to Europa because it doesn't currently have one. So, let's go with just a nice 1 ATM. Earth has 1 ATM. That'll give it a bit of temperature. But obviously, what we need to do now is Haswell Zone is switched on again. So Europa would currently need to be in the orbit of Earth to warm up. But if we do this... And then we can put Europa in the green area. I really like this Hathor zone thing. This is this is really cool. This is definitely one of the highlights to me. That I think that is really, really useful for uh, object curation. I think that's really cool. Whoa, what's going on here? I think we've I think it has a black tat. Yeah, okay, that's why, yeah. So there you are, okay. Let's lower that down a bit. So there you go, Europa with an atmosphere. And all we need to simply do is uh, let it warm up. Put it to zero degrees. We'll start to see that warm up, and we should see all of that ice melt. So let's um Let's see this. So we should have an all-ocean world. So let's see how that plays out. So let it warm up. Ooh, it does want to go very slowly here. Okay, let's uh, just give it a little more in, uh, increase in temperature. Or I should say uh, atmosphere. So let's increase it up a bit more. 180. So that should give it what it needs, the boost. So we should slowly see Europa. I mean, let's just let it play out a lot longer. There you go. So let's keep an eye on your rope at the top here. And we should start to see that ice begin to melt. So let's uh, let us let time play out. Six degrees, seven, eight, ten. Okay. Is it melting? Come on, Europa. It should easily be melting now. Come on. Is it? Can't really, can't really tell, honestly. Okay, that should easily have melted. Oh, I think all the water... I think it lost all of its water. <laughs> let's have a look. Did it lose it? It did. What is that? That's what it should have looked like. But again, Europa, this always happens, Europa. It can't hold on to all the water. But that that's what that's what the end result would have looked like. So there you go. What do you think of that? So again, you, you have the temperature. The temperature's fine. It's just it loses its material because it doesn't have enough mass to hold on to all of that atmosphere, really. So there you are. But that, that is what you would get. Like that is that's really cool. So yeah, I really, really like that. I think that's a really, really cool uh really really cool feature um in the game there but yeah there we are guys so that does it really for this update i mean i'm just looking uh any other bits and bobs i mean there's just um improvements planet nine has new consistent visuals there you go so that's in the patch notes as well so that's a little saying that um i asked um them to add so maybe maybe i had a little effect on that change but yeah that's really really awesome so yeah really really cool uh, update and yeah massive thanks to the uh the, the universe sandbox team for this update because this this is cool I really, really think this is really, really nice. I, I think, I think these these features here they may not be the most exciting at first, but when it comes down to customization and creating your own systems, these are some really, really useful features. And I think that the feature with the atmospheres and the Hatable Zone, I think that's going to be very, very cool to experiment with when we evolve a solar system from birth to death. I think we're going to have to get one of those out very soon because that's going to be very interesting in this update. So yeah, stay tuned for that, guys, because. That's going to be a blast, I think. I think we could have... I mean, it's currently um, the Saturday, so I think tomorrow, Sunday, I'm going to film that. So hopefully um, you guys can expect that out within um, a few days of this video. Um, but yeah, evolving a solar system from birth to death with this new update, I think we're going to be in for some serious action. So yeah, really hope you guys have enjoyed this video though. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 24,000 subscribers. And yeah, let me know what you think of this update. I think this is... I think this is really, really awesome. So, yeah, let me know um, what you think of this down below. And, yeah, if that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.